Hello friends! Welcome to the season one finale of Third Time's a Charm where I select three authors that I'm reading for the third time, two books from them I previously didn't like, and the third book we will decide should I continue with this author? Should we break up? Episode one we featured the contemporary shelf. Episode two featured the fantasy shelf. I feel like we had pretty much a 50-50 mix of authors that I will read more from, authors I won't, and now here we are in fall and we're reading mystery thrillers. This episode is definitely the one where I had the most authors to choose from. I have so, so, so many mystery thriller authors that I have read two books from and felt mediocre about. What qualifies an author is if I gave all of their books three stars or under. And the authors I selected, I think I gave all of them like a two and three star respectively. The first author we're gonna talk about is B.A. Paris. B.A. Paris came on the scene pretty like swiftly. I feel like it was overnight. Suddenly everyone was reading Behind Closed Doors. I picked up Behind Closed Doors, but it just sat in my TBR closet for a while. Eventually I ended up picking up The Breakdown and not liking it. I think I gave this three stars and thought it was fine. And so then I had no real motivation to go back and pick up Behind Closed Doors. But then she had another new release called Bring Me Back. And I was like, okay, I'll try again. And this one I liked even less and it was a two star. Now I do have a couple books to choose from from this author. There have been a couple other new releases, but they haven't been getting as good of ratings as the original Behind Closed Doors. Oh my God, look, it makes a rainbow. Do the other ones continue the rainbow? Is that gonna make me wanna pick up everything? But this is still the one that has the highest average rating. And I've seen some of my friends recently pick this up and they are readers who are well-versed in thrillers and still gave this like a four, I think they all gave it four stars. So that really does give me hope that even though it's been around for a while and it's one of those mystery books that just like lingers around that I'm like, I'll get to you one day. Maybe after all this time, it will surprise me and impress me. And then based on how this goes, we will decide if I continue, I really do want to check out The Therapist. It's not getting great ratings, but I'm excited to see. What didn't work for me with these before? I think this one was just a little basic. And this one, I remember doing actual things that bothered me. <laughs> these are all domestic thrillers that have to do with a husband and wife. And it sounds like this one is just uh, something might be happening between this couple behind closed doors. That's a secret because they put on such a good front in front of other people. But what's what's really happening. My next pick is Paula Hawkins. Uh, this is a brand new release. I just decided to pick it up. I don't know if it's gonna be my best decision because I haven't been shy about my feelings about the girl on the train. I just do not, I've never understood the hype about this one. I feel like there's a thriller every single year that everyone just freaks out about that I don't understand. But then I did decide to pick up her follow-up into the water and I thought it was better. I think this was a two, this was a three. This was more interesting as far as the family dynamics and I like books set around water and this had a more like ominous feeling that I enjoyed and less tropes, but it still like wasn't it. But this, this could be it. It's called A Slow Fire Burning and uh, I haven't actually read the synopsis, but I've just always known that I wanted to try Paula Hawkins again. It says a young man is found gruesomely murdered on a houseboat and there are three women with separate connections to the victim. Does that mean we have three POVs? No, interesting. Ooh, but we have a map. And then lastly, I decided to choose Alice Feeney and I really don't know about this pick. This is the one that I am most unsure about. So I actually got an arc of I Know Who You Are. I don't really remember if I was excited to read this or if I felt like I had to read it because I didn't totally vibe with Sometimes I Lie. So I gave this three stars. I think I read this because of the Goodreads Choice Awards. It wasn't really on my radar and I thought it was fine. And then I got I Know Who You Are. And again, it wasn't that it just didn't work for me. The second book that I read from this author as well, like actively bothered me. And this is the author that I decided to throw in last minute. I was going back and forth between a bunch of different authors. I knew I wanted to be a Paris, knew I wanted to do Paula Hawkins, but I have gotten probably 10 or 20 DMs, comments, tags, that I'm gonna enjoy this. It's called Rock, Paper, Scissors. I didn't pick up Alice Feeney's um, book right before this one, but this one, I'm down to give a try. We are following a couple on their anniversary. The husband has face blindness and his wife is sick of feeling unseen. They have a weekend away in Scotland, but they both know this weekend will make or break their marriage. Okay, a little bit of a vague synopsis. And something I'm just realizing is all three of these authors 
are UK authors. And I wonder if there's something to do with a certain like writing style that just doesn't mesh with me with a lot of UK authors. I mean, it did take me like five Ruth Ware books before I, I liked her, a book. But we'll see what happens. I have been having luck with mystery thrillers this past month. So I hope that we continue on a positive road and that all of these I give five stars and I just have all of these more thrillers to recommend to you. And let's begin the journey. Good morning. It's another gloomy fall day. I don't know if the lamp is better but today is an errand day so i this is the one good thing about reading one of um these books being a backlist book is i can grab the audiobook really easily from my library so i'm listening to it or i'm gonna start listening to it on libby i just have to find like the right spot where i stopped last night because the chapters aren't numbered but i'm on page 88 which just says present so i'm just gonna find my spot and then continue listening to the audiobook the other two have like a hundred person wait so that's not gonna happen so far i really like how the book is structured i think the length of chapters is really good it goes back and forth between past and present obviously we're going through the ins and outs of this toxic seeming relationship obviously not everything is easily predictable at least i hope it seems like it's telling a very straightforward story which makes me assume that there's other things going on that will be revealed seeing how she interacts with her friends is really accurate like um she doesn't have a cell phone she doesn't hang out with her friends one-on-one -on -one, like ever and by friends i mean more like her husband's acquaintances and i feel like a lot of times in books like these where there seems to be like an abusive partner um the entire friendship group or every single acquaintance is completely in the dark and like that's a whole commentary of the book is that like people don't recognize when things are shady and society doesn't notice when women are being hurt or whatever might be going on um but her acquaintances are very much like hey why don't you and i like go off together just the two of us and talk for a second hey why don't you give me your phone number and then she's like oh you can have my husband's phone number and so she asks one of the women for their phone number and her husband's putting it into his phone and the women at the table are very much subtly but clearly trying to get their phone number to this woman who they think might be in trouble and that's what i think is a really great portrayal because like i said a lot of times in books like these everyone is in the dark and it's almost like an insult sometimes that like all of these other women are rich and successful and they don't have the time of day and they wouldn't recognize a woman in distress so obviously we don't know the full story yet but i like it so far i just curled my hair okay everyone enjoy how pretty my hair is for five seconds it's about to get soaking wet i am back to reading physically i'm on page 170 which is a little over halfway and i don't know um i have no real complaints i'm assuming the book's gonna do something interesting there's gonna be some kind of twist or it's gonna get more thrilling the thing about the past and present storyline is um there has to be some mystery involved i think for me to really get on board because otherwise the past storyline seems like kind of irrelevant because you know the present storyline so you know that nothing that crazy is going to happen in the past storyline because obviously it didn't influence where we currently are so there's definitely a lot more interest in like what's about to happen right now it's just a really big bummer to read it's a lot of repetitive scenes it's a lot of depressing scenes obviously intentionally um it's more thriller than mystery but therefore i need it to get a little more thrilling to make up for the lack of a mystery so that's where i'm at one of the most prominent characters in the story has down syndrome so i also would be interested to hear any thoughts on representation for that character i think i'm gonna finish it tonight though like i can't imagine not it's fast paced quick to get through and i don't know if i really want to continue reading it for another day well shit you know what 
this is a four star thriller. Who would have thought? It really, it was really well done. I know I shouldn't seem surprised, but um, I was right. Like it didn't do anything more than what it was. No, there weren't any big twists and turns and reveals really. It was a really straightforward thriller. But I think the story was told extremely well. And I will join the troop of people who are continuing to recommend this book. Even if you have a lot of like experience with thrillers and mysteries and this doesn't really bring anything new to the table, it was really solid. Um, especially that last third. It was told in such an interesting way because there's the two timelines and it's the same kind of story both times. Like you're still following this couple and you still know that something is off with them. But eventually they kind of like meet up since both the timelines jump forward in time. This one is faster than this one. So eventually they match up and you start to know certain things before they've happened in this timeline and it just got really interesting to read. It's hard to talk about any other plot points. There really weren't any and I think I understand now why I don't really hear people talk about this book. Like nobody discusses it past just the initial pitch. Now I understand. There's really not that much to discuss. It's more how the narrative flows. This is tough though because now I have to decide I mean, the decision has been made. I will pick up more B.A. Paris. However, if this was the first and it's the best, are there things out there that she's already come out with that I could enjoy? Should I wait for other things to come out? Much to ponder, but a really great way to kick off this video. How do I recommend it to people? Uh, if you enjoy just a well-told story, pick it up. You know, it's not over the top. It doesn't do anything wild. It doesn't have twists. It's not like this big impact story. It's just, it is what it is and it's an important story and it's good. <laughs> Today I started A Slow Fire Burning by Paula Hawkins. Um, I made it to 60 pages in. It's only 300 pages, so it's a quick read. Um, so I will get through it. I don't want to, I don't like it. But the thing about the third time's a charm is that if I don't complete this book and I DNF it, like I haven't really tested the waters. And I'm going to continue with her future releases to try to figure out if I should pick them up or not. So I need to power through. I know most people would be fine with me DNFing it, but there is that small amount of people that would be like, come on, just like finish it out. You didn't complete your own challenge if you don't finish it. So I'm doing it. Um, but what I want to do first is I actually really want to go back and see what I said about Into the Water. Because a lot of times when I read a thriller and I don't like it, it's because of like the twist, that it was too predictable or that it was too basic, that I read it a ton of times before. And what I want to know is why I didn't like that one. And was it just the vibes? because the vibes of this I hate. I really just don't like the way it's written. I don't like how characters are being introduced. I don't like the POVs that we're getting. I just am not into it. I just want to know. Apparently I read this in summer 2017. That's the last time I read a Paula Hawkins. I remember distinctly my feelings and all of my thoughts on Girl on the Train, but I don't remember this one. And if it is the vibes, then, then maybe this wasn't a good pick. Let's see. Oh, this is going to be so obnoxious. I have another three star and that's Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. Another mystery thriller I read that was just okay. Most mystery thrillers I read are three stars. That's just kind of the nature of my experience with them. But this is about this like pool, this river. They call it the drowning pool and it's where women continually die, or, like commit suicide or are drowned as witches um, throughout a span of many years. And we are following the family of a woman who just died. And we're following her sister and we're following her daughter and we're following like a ton of other characters as well. There's so many different um, perspectives in here, which is really cool. But overall the story and the characters like just didn't do that much for me. So three stars, love this cover though. Okay. 
Okay, I know I'm bad at reviewing books now, but like that was a poor review. I gained nothing from it. So you watching it, you would have gained nothing from it either. So far we have had the man be discovered and we have visited all of the women and learned like their relationship with the victim. And they're all just written in a way that I don't enjoy. The way each character is pitched and like the issues that they have, the trials they've been through. I just don't like the way things are being covered. But onward, we will go. I actually have a short clip that I'm gonna share with you because this vlog isn't gonna be too interesting. It's just like a weekend spent at home by myself. But my former coworker, while I was filming my last vlog, dropped off um, a new Sweet Legs product that I was really excited to share, but they didn't launch by the time I was posting the vlog, so I didn't wanna share it too early. But by now, the new Athleisure has launched. So I'm just gonna throw in a quick clip of me uh, talking about it. So enjoy that old clip to kind of chop up the mundane activities of this vlog. See it as a commercial. P.S. I love that Aaron's wearing leopard because so am I. And this weirdly ties into what I wanna to talk to you about. Okay, these are my sweet legs. These are my favorite sweet legs. Very cute, very fun. Um, my coworker just dropped off to me. Athleisure. We've had this same liking for like, since the beginning of Sweet Legs, like the little elastic. I love the elastic. It's high-waisted. The casing and the type of elastic and the stretchiness like isn't a typical legging like this. Like it doesn't dig in, like it's super stretchy, it's super comfy, and I love it. Like the Sweet Legs customers love that fit. They're never gonna get rid of the fit. But Athleisure has been in development for so long and this was like honestly the one reason that i was sad about the timing of my leaving is because i knew this was coming in october november everyone worked really hard on these and oh my gosh i tried on every single pair i tested every single pair adjusted every fit worked on the marketing worked on this hang tag my sweater is already shedding all over it but it's like the thick waistband it's a totally different material it's like a true in between like the fashion legging and an athletic legging there's a little pocket in the waist and these are like my favorite thing i'm gonna put them on right now if i wasn't on my period and feeling like shit and being all bloated i would take these on a nice little hike these are just like the best thing i've ever put on my body oh my god these feel fantastic i'm obsessed i want 20 pairs here we are again getting ready don't mind how I look right now but uh, I gave up on the book at a hundred pages in and I picked up the audiobook I caved I picked up the audiobook it is narrated by Rosamund Pike um, who's doing a great job shout out to Libro FM for having it I just find uh, in here there are too many character histories being involved and I don't mind that as a concept. So we have like these three different women. They're all involved in some way with this man who has died. And at this point, they're all like being questioned or investigated or they're just like, um, you know, there's that woman in the uh, houseboating area who you might be familiar with, like that typical woman in like an apartment complex who's a little bit older and just like knows what everybody is up to in the neighborhood. She just like watches people all day long. And we're getting the backstories of all three of these women. And the thing about that is like they've all experienced traumas. So either like they have been injured in their past or someone they know someone close to them has died and they're recovering or they're just like dealing with their circumstances. And obviously there's this murder at the forefront of the story um and so introducing these characters backstories have to do one of two things either they're like to give you more insight into the character care more about them get to know them better um etc which they don't really do because i don't think they're particularly written well um or they're supposed to be like red herrings so obviously someone murdered this man and there's three people who it could be. So let's explore all three of them equally so you will never really know who done it until the big reveal. But I'm telling you right now, it's very clear who's responsible. That's how I feel at least one third of the way into the book. I guess what I like in a mystery is if we're diving into the lives of these people and like slowly the mystery gets revealed while we do that. But what it seems like to me is that we're just going to continue to dive into their feelings and their pasts 
and there's just going to be like one reveal at the end as opposed to little clues as we build through the story so it's just the structure itself that isn't my favorite um but i can probably wrap up the audiobook today because i have some errands to run i'm headed into town i have a couple different like things to pick up a couple places to stop i'll be on the road for a bit and I will show you what I'm up to. Okay, so first I stopped in at Lush because I had like an order I made online. So I could just walk in and pick it up really easily and I don't remember what they are, but I know they were Halloween-y. Okay, this one's not, it's a little heart. This one says it's the Worry Monster Bubble Bar. Oh my God, he's so cute. And then, ooh, this one's just a big ghost. I'm gonna use these for an Instagram picture. And then I'm gonna take, oh, he gave me a couple samples. One of them is a shower gel, but one of them is a foot bomb can't say I've ever used a foot bomb, but I'm going to take a spooky bath later. I picked up a couple books that I can't show you because uh, they're for a video. And then I stopped in at HomeSense to see if there was any other spooky things that I could include in some like Instagram pictures this week. Um, but instead they held all their Christmas stuff out. So of course I bought all of their Christmas stuff. I got a white tree. I got a wood tree. I got a gold tree and I got a gold pinky white tree. And these are going to sit together somewhere in my house. Now I need to eat something because it's noon and I haven't had coffee or breakfast or lunch. So I'm in need. What a weird angle I just decided to vlog from. Do you want to see the other things I bought today? <laughs> actually, wait, you're going to see these in a haul before this vlog. So I'm actually not going to talk about it. Um, but I got some mysteries and thrillers. Then I found this one, which kicks off the rabbit vlog uh, nine months from now. <laughs> Yeah, and then I got this one, which really blends in with the color vibes that I've been really liking. I recently posted a picture on Instagram of these three um, spines together. This one's a little more green than blue, but like, this is just calling to me. The books themselves, I want to read, but also, look at them. I also didn't realize that... Something that I'm doing, a video you're going to see in like a month, I think was inadvertently inspired by this. You'll find out what I'm talking about later. <laughs> we love a teaser. Do we? Where am I going to fit all these on my DVR shelf? Also, if I stream, what stream? Seem, if I seem extremely caffeinated, it's because Robbie and I got home at the same time and I got myself a drink and I already drank it and he brought me a drink as well. It's the same one and we both got home at the same time. He's like, here's a coffee. And I was like, I already got a coffee. And then he got me a lemon loaf and I was like, I already got myself a lemon loaf. We both know me so well. I don't want to offend him by not drinking his gift. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to reading my book, I promise. Uh, that was a big oof. <laughs> I actually, We'd love to return this book. Look, it's in perfect condition. Slow being in the title is just so perfect for this book. It is a slow, slow mystery. This did not feel like 300 pages. This was a, a 575 page. Why so specific? I don't know. Drawn out, exhausting story. I don't want to be mean but I don't have anything nice to say I really just hate the way that she writes her characters like I I, I hate it it's so cold it's so removed like you're just being told facts about their life and regardless of how like empathetic you would feel towards a person in real life going through these trials they're just not written in a way that makes you feel anything there are little moments of a character's novel in here um which i enjoyed they were very short like that's it just this one little page and it gives you a little insight into like an underlying mystery kind of and that's the only part that i liked was the book inside the book and there's probably six pages of it in the whole thing. <laughs> but the mystery overall was boring. I really did not care who done it in the end. Could not care any less who had done it. If you had told me any of the three women had done it or any other side character had done it, I would have been like, okay, cool. I would recommend the audiobook because I feel like what I see from other people is that the reading experience like physically gets a little confusing with all the different POVs and insertions. It does get kind of convoluted. Uh, and so repetitive 
I feel like the characters' names alone. Let me flip to a page. Oh my god, I flipped to the perfect page. Okay, on this page alone, the name Laura is on it eight times. Eight times. Laura said, Laura said, Laura said, Laura read, Laura stirred, Laura said, Laura smiled. Like, I know you obviously have to introduce your, like, you need to know who's doing what, but like, my god. Honestly, the map really adds nothing to the story. I think it could have benefited from being in like first person. But I don't know, her constantly relying on characters who are not mentally sound is also getting frustrating to read. Like I just don't like how the main character was handled at all. I don't like the things that she went through. I don't like the things that the author chose to make her go through and react to and the way that she was spoken about as a character i just like i don't enjoy it i'm pretty bummed about this i don't think i'm gonna pick up from her anymore which is fine it's the point i just i know that like in four more years she's gonna come out with something else and i'm gonna be like should i <laughs> overall i hope this book finds its audience it's not me one and a half stars oh it hurts. Not as much as the $35 price tag hurts. But let's hope we end the video with a banger. Good morning. Today is a day for reading and errands and Sweet Legs Athleisure. It's a rainy day. It's also actually a snowy day on top of some faraway mountains. This is not a good angle for me. Um, It's also a day of getting Liam's skate sharpened. He has hockey today, so I have all his hockey stuff laying out to air out because it stinks. It reminds me of when I used to work um, at the hotel. Sorry, I'm just getting my shoes on. Doing housekeeping, there would be most weekends, it was like an entire floor of hockey players. And every single room you would go into, it'd be four like teenage hockey boys and four hockey bags. And it would smell so bad. But anyway, I've got my book. I haven't started it yet. I've got my library card. And as Arthur says, having fun's not hard when you have a library card. Okay, dropped off the skates. Haven't started reading yet. Picked up some library books. I grabbed the Book of Accidents. I grabbed When the Reckoning Comes. I also grabbed this one, just in case like I could get to it in November along with everything else. I don't think this will be in the Choice Awards because they typically don't do YA, which I don't understand. Or maybe I just assumed this one was YA. Now I'm gonna continue to not read, but I'm gonna go to the drugstore. I'll also show you my haul from there because it's just so fascinating. Okay, got my groceries. Still haven't read anything, but here's the groceries in the back of my vehicle. All right, got my drugstore stuff. So exciting. I also picked up a new um, lip thing. And I really just keep buying the same color from every single brand and hoping that it's gonna be the one. Oh, it smells incredible. Is that the one? I don't know. Oh God, that's what I look like right now? <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, I was just sitting on my phone and then I tried to pull, anyway. <laughs> I'm finally gonna start this. It has been the longest day ever. It's 7.45. I'm trying to decide if 7.45 is too late to make a coffee. Cause I don't think I'm gonna make it, but I'm gonna, I have to read this. I'm behind, I'm so behind. Like all of my reading this month is like a week late. Oh, and now there's no room on my memory card. See you in a bit. I Guess what? It's another gloomy, gloomy day. It's really putting me in a mood. Like, it's making me sleepy. That's part of why I bought myself flowers yesterday. <laughs> a lot of flowers. When I buy a big bouquet like that, I split them up. So here's my one vase of flowers, and I get to just sit here and look at them, and it'll make me happy. And I'm not gonna get up. I'm just gonna zoom you in way too far. That's my other vase. Vase. That Oh, you can't see that um, I put other flowers in and it started leaking all over the floor So I had the genius idea of putting the flowers in a cheese grater and I just think it's really working for me <laughs> Home decor not my strong suit my strong suit reading. No, it's not. I've barely started I got the basic introductions of this married couple whose names. I already forget mr. And mrs. Wright Adam and Amelia and they're on their way to a weekend away. 
they're in the vehicle and I I think they'll get out of the vehicle soon don't worry it's not a road trip and the thing about this is like I know there's gonna be a plot twist that is what Alice Feeney does I haven't fully enjoyed her books in the past whether it be the vibe or the twist at least I know there's going to be a twist it's not gonna be just like a basic story she's going to do something love it or hate it it's gonna be it's gonna be something okay 45 pages in and I have very good feelings i really like the narration style i like that we're going back and forth between the two characters and then there's also these little insertions of like secret journal entries from the wife so it'll go like word of the year shenanigans and then she'll talk to her husband so they're like letters to him that are like today is our first anniversary and here's everything that's happened in the last year here's how i feel about it and i really like that idea rather than just um, bouncing back and forth between timelines they're told differently so that also helps like solidify what timeline you're in and we're slowly learning about their marriage um, and both of their perspectives they like think they know what their partner is thinking and then we switch to the other POV and they're like actually I saw exactly what they were doing blah 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 and the atmosphere is amazing so they drove to this little I guess this is it on the cover there's a chapel where they're staying for the weekend and it's kind of confusing how they ended up there like who really organized it why they're there is there somebody else there because already some weird things are happening like certain things are becoming locked or unlocked or doors are open or closed when they weren't a couple seconds ago i don't think any of this is spoilers because we're in the first like 50 pages of the book but the initial atmosphere of this chapel is so spooky and it's very well described and i feel like i don't know what's gonna happen i feel i feel a little tense i am now 175 pages in and i need to start dinner but I'm definitely gonna finish this today. I'm excited to keep reading, but I just really don't understand where, like what it could do from here. So I just wonder if like things are gonna take a complete left turn and we're gonna have a completely different plot or just as we travel down this road of this like dynamic, when, some when something is going to be revealed because like i don't have any questions right now so i'm not waiting for an answer to anything i'm just along i'm just reading the atmosphere is still great but like <laughs> there's nothing happening just kidding i'm back um this is the problem with stopping reading is it makes me ponder what's actually happening this is why i pick up audiobooks so i don't have time to think and theorize. Because normally I would just plug in the audiobook and I would just continue it and I wouldn't stop. And I haven't read any more pages, but as I was standing here chopping things, I was like, wait a minute. The twist seems so obvious to me now. And it is a twist that I like, but this is like the only thing it could possibly be because there's such little going on besides the narration styles. Okay. But the only thing I have to really consider is that we're being misdirected. And this is something that I just remembered I said about Alice Feeney's previous book is that I didn't feel like there was enough red herrings. There is a couple in this book, but not enough that feels significant that you would consider that it's going to be the big like twist. But I think I get it now. And I'm excited to find out if I'm right. I guess that's the thing keeping me interested. It's not so much the story at this point, but now I want to know if I am predicting things. I don't spend a lot of time typically predicting what's going to happen in thrillers and mysteries. But now that I have, I must know. Don't judge me, I am eating dinner in my bed. So I can read my book. My update, I have 50 pages to go. That's it, only 50 pages. And the story has gone places I don't really care about. Uh, the chapters have gotten longer, which is like the opposite of what I typically enjoy and want in a thriller. Oh my God, I need to wash my hair so bad. 
usually the book starts out like slow and then the chapters get shorter and the pace starts to pick up and like it gets so exciting and maybe it will go there from this point on but like I've just been reading about other storylines that I don't really care for and they're dragging and I still don't know where it's going oh boy this is tough <laughs> this is really tough um I feel like there are three or four books that I've read in the last month that I have been saying afterwards like if this is the first time you've ever read this twist I understand everybody's high praise and high ratings and I wish that it was my first time reading this twist and I wish it wasn't so predictable so I could be I could be there with you I would say there's three twists in here which is something that I enjoy um, is when a thriller gets convoluted and when there isn't just one answer to one question so even after we solve a mystery and even after it was predictable if there's another one like at least there's another one and there was so I didn't it's not that I didn't like the first twist it is a twist that I enjoy but what I've said about every Alice Feeney is that there's not enough going on to distract you from the journey that you're clearly going on. I think this is an author that I would pick up after a couple more books. What I feel like if I looked at like 10 of my most read thriller authors, they've all hit the same like five tropes. Like there's, let me think of not even specifically about the authors I just read, but like the typical thriller tropes. So we've got like the classic just unreliable narrator who's lying to you, um, who you can't trust and in the end you find out what really happened. Then you have the unreliable narrator who doesn't know that they're the unreliable narrator because of mental health and there's always a scene where they like revisit um, the like scene of an accident or the scene of their trauma and then all their memories come back and then we find out they were unreliable. Another twist is like that there's two characters who end up being the same character in the end. So it's like, I have a husband and I have a brother and in the end they turned out to be the same person. I just like forgot my brother from childhood is now my husband. Yes, I have read that too many times to count. Another one is like the classic, it was all a dream all along. Another trope I feel like is like a group of four or five friends and at the end of the book, you think that there's only gonna be one killer, but like two or three were working together. What's another one? Um, the idea that like the author is writing from a perspective and then you assume it's a certain perspective, but as the book goes on, like there's a reveal that it wasn't the perspective you thought you were reading from. What else? The trope of a character dying and then you find out they were really just missing or you find out a character was missing and in the end you find out they're actually dead. I feel like every author just has to go through doing every single one of these and then eventually they do something else and it's like really good once they have their own real spin on things. So like with Alice Feeney, she's just hit. She's hit well, actually, I don't know. Ooh, I don't know what happened in this book. Tell me if it's a trope that I'm not going to expect. But I feel like she's hit a few. And in a couple more books, I would be down to try her out again, even though I gave this three stars. Technically, this is my favorite Alice Feeney because it made up, not made up, but like some issues I took with her other books, um, she has clearly improved upon those things. There are less open endings, there are less unanswered questions, but of like the three twists, I saw one coming and it also like just like wasn't crafted in quite a good enough way for me. Um, the second twist was good, the third twist was like okay, but it was such a little twist and it doesn't really matter, but like just that little extra moment, I was like fuck me up. So I definitely understand this one, I'm still going to recommend it to people consistently in the future but as for like the third time third time's a charm was the third time a charm yes and i will read more from va paris i might wait until more books come out um was the third time a charm here yes because the charm was finding out that this is not an author for me and i don't think that even like 10 years in the future 
we are going to mesh well. So it is, it's a success. I don't care if I, well, I mean, like, I obviously always want to like the books I'm reading, but I don't care at the end of these videos if I'm going to read the author again or not. I just want to know. And now I know. With this one, it's a little more up in the air. I will be keeping an eye on Alice Feeney, but I'm not going to, like, pick up her stuff the month it comes out. It's not going to be book club selections. It's stuff that I'm just going to wait to see what the buzz is about and then decide if I can go forth. So I'm currently paused on these authors and I I might be, am I paused on all of them depending on what you tell me in the comments about their other things that are out there if I should go back and read them I think maybe I shouldn't and I should just wait until their future stuff but I'll let you guide me but I've learned a lot I enjoyed one thought one was good and thought one was a waste of my money thank you very much for hanging out with me this week uh i don't know let me know what your favorite thriller have i i feel like i haven't actually asked you recently what your favorite thriller has been recently so if you have made it to this part in the video i would love to know like up 2021 doesn't have to be new releases but like what are some thrillers you have read in recent memory that you have really enjoyed i don't care if i've read them or not i just want to know like what you've been into lately and if you've been loving stuff so i will chat with you in the comments below and i will see you later Bye.